get some analysis on the UN General Assembly by speaking to Sean Michael Cox. He's a professor of political science at Bachelorette University and a senior advisor for the Global Policy Institute in Washington. And he's joining us from Istanbul. Uh, professor Cox, thanks so much for being with us here on TRT World. Always good to have you uh, on the programme. So first, let's pick up uh, on what we heard from President Xi Jinping, a major announcement on the building of um, fossil fuel coal-powered power stations across uh, the world. Uh, just how important is that statement from him? To a certain extent, it's quite important because that demonstrates that China has made a commitment to participate in the climate change debate to help improve the climate to be more engaged in the rest of the world. But there's also a, a slight trick that uh, President Xi has also included in the speech is that he said that they're not going to build any new ones, but he didn't address what they're going to do about the existing ones, if they're going to try and reduce them or going to try and shift to clean energy. All he's committed China to is to stop the uh, current trend of building new coal-fired plants. And so he's, he's connecting with the rest of the world to a certain level, but he's not making a full commitment by China to uh, resolve the climate change issue. Yes, and it's obviously hugely challenging for all these world leaders to try and reduce their carbon emissions uh, in line with the Paris Agreement. But we did hear lots of statements from many leaders, including the, the leader of Turkey, uh, the President uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, uh, making a, a big point about the climate process. And this is all leading up, of course, to COP26, which is happening in Glasgow in a couple of weeks' time, isn't it? Yes, that's absolutely true. We've seen at this current uh, UN General Assembly general debate, which this week of... of leaders around the world talking is called that they're focusing on on the climate change uh, issue they're focusing on COVID, and they're focusing on international security so those are the three big topics that we're going to be seeing from uh, world leaders as they speak to the general assembly between now and next monday and i wonder if you had anything more interesting to do but or listen to president biden uh, give his first address at the uh, general assembly uh, marks out of 10 for the president of the united states I put him somewhere right in the middle, uh, somewhere around a five. He, he gave some very firm statements. Uh, there was nothing that was too surprising there. The, the leaders of all the different countries who speak at the UN General Assembly try to emphasize the positive aspects of what their countries are doing, and they try to rebuke to different degrees those countries that they are in, not in alignment with or not in agreement with. So President Biden naturally emphasized how the United States is contributing to resolve the global, global climate issue. He emphasized how the United States is helping other countries address their security issues. And he's also, he also addressed how the United States is helping to resolve the issue of the COVID-19 pandemic. His speech, of course, was met with a fairly high level uh, of skepticism by those who were in attendance because for example, the debacle and the exit from Afghanistan was very problematic. And also the fact that the United States is seems to be hoarding uh, vaccinations is another issue that less developed countries are still trying to address. So uh, his, his announcements, his pronouncements at his speech were uh, greeted with a certain level of skepticism that is generally pretty typical of these type of meetings. Yeah, I think you're right. Skepticism is a, a nice word. Cynicism, perhaps. And I'm glad you mentioned the, uh, the Afghan uh, piece because, as you will have seen this morning, the Taliban have asked if they can address the UN General Assembly. Just your thoughts on the idea that this group may well be able to address the UN General Assembly. Honestly, I think it's highly unlikely because these schedules are set up well ahead of time and the lack of recognition of the Taliban's authority in Kabul is still uh, being addressed around the world. I don't think there will be a lot of agreement among members of the UN General Assembly to allow the Taliban to speak. And there'd also be a very great concern of, in fact, what they would say. Uh, they would probably like to pre-vet the speech, but I don't think the Taliban would be interested in offering that up. So I, I, I think it would be very challenging for them to actually appear and give a speech at the UN General Assembly. Okay, Professor Sean Michael Cox, appreciate your analysis, sir. Thank you for that.